Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you my uh, cave spider farm here. Now I already went into a bit of this in a previous video where I talked about how to keep uh, the spiders from climbing on your walls, but a lot of people wanted to actually see like my farm. So I'm going to show off mainly the kill chamber here because there are two important things that you have to consider when you're designing this kill chamber. Namely, you want to be able to not be poisoned when you're attacking the spiders. And then you need a way to get the experience without being poisoned as well. And I've managed to find a good solution to that, and I'm going to show you guys how to build that. Let's take out the remaining spiders here. There we go. And we go here, collect the experience. So, I have some redstone here it's, and these metal trapdoors. It's not strictly ne necessary to use those. We can use wood as well if you're um, on a tight budget, but I find it lo looks nicer and it's a, I just like using the metal trapdoors. So you have the area in the middle where you can swipe at the spiders. They get trapped there. You have your chest that all of the stuff falls into on each side. And you can stand in these corners, and you will not get poisoned, and you can sort of drag the experience over, as you saw. So I made a bit of a model, because I didn't want to disassemble this to show you guys, so I recreated it over here. And I made a bit of a model to show you guys how to build it. So, the bottom layer, so to speak, like the floor, would be the redstone blocks. Now, as said, it's not necessary to use those, you could just use wooden trapdoors here, but... I wanted to use metal trapdoors so you can't accidentally toggle them, and then in order to have them stand up, I need the redstone, and I also find that it looks nice. So, bottom floor is redstone. The next level is you have these trapdoors, and basically you place them on the redstone, they'll flap up, Then behind that you have a solid block, can be anything, and then you have two layers of hoppers, and those hoppers will go to your chest. Now, the way I have it set up was with the chest at each side. Some of the hoppers go one way, some of them go the other way. My thing was five units wide with the ch chest on the outside. Yours can be wider or narrower. That doesn't matter. And then behind the hoppers, you have basically the solid blocks that your water is on. So, next layer up. So, we did the floor layer. We did basically this sort of layer down here next layer up is this layer. So you have nothing above where you're standing, uh, because that's where your head is. Then you have these trapdoors attached to the block above. Now we haven't placed yet because we're sort of going through the bottom up, but you'll have to play that, place that afterwards. Those are above the solid block here. Then next up you have a slab, or a row of slabs, placed on your hoppers. And then basically you want one of the set, you know, the, the set of hoppers close to you should be covered by slabs. The other one should have the water flowing into it. And then you have your water flowing the rest of the way. I put some seagrass into the source blocks so that I don't freeze them with frost water. This is a tip I mentioned in my last video as well. Because this area might be dark and you don't want it freezing. And then the spiders will get washed into here. Into the kill chamber. Next layer up. So above that, I have these upside-down stairs. Now, it doesn't necessarily need to be an upside-down stair, but you should have some sort of block here. And it's not just decorative, it serves a specific purpose. Namely, it keeps you from jumping on top of the trapdoor here. If you do that, you would be too close to the spiders and they'd be able to poison you. The whole reason why we have this trapdoor is to add additional distance between, you know, this is where the spiders are. They're really good at hitting you through blocks. So we add this additional distance, and they cannot poison you through that. That's why we add this block here to keep you from jumping so you stand on top of that. And overall, like this trapdoor here, we can now add it when we add the block here. You'll be able to put this trapdoor, and the spiders will be not be able to get any closer than this. And then you'll want a solid block above your slab, another solid block above the hopper and the flowing water, and then how the rest of the chamber is set up, that depends a bit on where exactly your spawner is, how far away you're, you know, washing the spiders. 
if you want to have this protrude further or a wall going up here. We can look at how I did it in my case. I'll do that at the end of the video. And then the layer above that, I'm just going to mention this briefly. Like, If you want to be able to walk over where the spiders are, namely here and here, then you need to make this more than one block thick. And I have a second block up here just demonstratively because otherwise these spiders will hit you through the floor. This is another common annoyance with spider farms. You don't want them to hit you through the floor. This is why I have these extra blocks on top. So this is sort of a cut section here. Um, I also put the chest on the other side. As we said, the hoppers go into this chest, and this spot that you can stand here is the perfect distance for you to be able to grab the experience. If this was a full block, then you wouldn't be able to get close enough to grab the experience. And if this was, say, a fence post, which I tried as well, then you'd get too close and you'd poison, the spiders would poison you while you're getting the experience. A chest is the perfect size for this location, and that's why we use a chest here. And it's you know convenient to grab the stuff. So that's, that's how I've set up my kill chamber. I'm extremely happy with how it looks. And once again, if you're on a budget, you do not need to use uh, metal trapdoors. And then if you don't use metal trapdoors, you don't need the redstone either. You can just use wooden trapdoors. But the advantage of metal is you can't accidentally toggle it. So let's get back to my actual um, spider farm here. So I can show you guys. I showed this in the last video. I'll go over it again briefly, not in as much detail, but just briefly again. So I have these lamps here. I have one on each side. That is enough to light up the area, keep the spiders from spawning. I made it one wider than the total spawn area. So one, two, three, four. That's how far they can spawn. By making it five here, they will never spawn in the outside layer. The levels never spawn right next to a wall. So they won't have the opportunity to climb. And then I just dumped a source block into each corner. Easy enough. And then you sort of end up with this hole in the middle where the water doesn't reach. So I excavated all of that, and then I excavated a little bit more to try and create overhangs everywhere. And then I used some signs to create those actual overhangs. There we go. You could also use fence gates or other items that block water. And then I put in here my seagrass again into the source blocks. And honestly, in a normal, if you're just making a cave spider farm, you could just have this water flow right into the kill chamber. So have the kill chamber right there. Now, my situation is a bit more complicated because I also had a zombie spawner nearby and I wanted to incorporate both of them. That's why I had to make the whole thing move down another layer and end up down here in the kill chamber. So I basically just added a second layer. I showed this off in the other videos. Well, it's just another drop down with a bunch of overhangs. The overhangs are so that when the spiders climb up, they will wash, be washed back down. And I have here these corners where they like to get stuck. I have water that flows towards the middle. I explained that in detail last time, how the water sort of pushes the spiders back, how any wall that they can climb up, I tried to make it so that, oh, they climb up and they end up in water that flows back to where they should go. That was the general gist of the farm while I explained it last time. So we can close this up again, turn off the lights, and it will be activated. And we need two lights because uh, the whole spawn chamber is a bit wider than it would be because I don't want the spiders to climb on the walls. Right. And here you can use tinted glass if you want to look inside. That's what I've done. And we see the spider fall down. And then we have to go down a layer. So here this is sort of the transition layer. This is where you'd normally have your kill chamber if you're just building a spider farm and then you don't have to worry about going down another level and making sure spiders don't climb all of those walls. So I put the kill chamber here normally. However, I also had a zombie spawner nearby, and that's why I chose this location in the first place. That's here, and that's why I wanted the spiders to go down further. That's why I did it like this. And here, th for this chamber, I just did it really simple. I just dug out the one, two, three, four in each direction didn't bother because zombies don't climb walls. I put in the seagrass again to keep the water from freezing with Frostwalker act activated. I have water flowing all to the edge, and I have water flowing into here. Then I sort of have it flowing around a corner, and here for this kill chamber I just have some fence gates, 
I have once again the vertical trapdoors because they look nice and they add a bit more distance. Some more trapdoors here. And then I had did some stuff with droppers here to try and uh, drown zombies. That's a topic for another day. It wasn't so successful as a technique anyway. Close that. So here we have our spiders. We can swipe at them. We can drag the experience to the corner. We can repair our hoe. Uh, not enough yet. And then we can get all the items. And here I have my zombie spawner as well. Zombies can't hit me. The items go into this chest. There we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'm sorry I didn't do like a complete build of how to set it up, but I think I showed you enough that you could replicate this. The main reason I didn't go through step by step for everything is, as said, because this is a bit more complicated than it needs to be because I had this second spawner that I wanted to incorporate. But I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.